Next up on the channel, we're back in Ireland. It's right-hand drive country, and we're here with the Volvo EX30, and it's the rear-wheel drive extended range version. We've already had this on the channel when it launched in Barcelona, but it's great to get it back here for a while, have it for a full week, and actually test it on Irish roads and see what it's like. There are some lots of things I like, one or two things that are niggling away at me. We're gonna have a look around the outside, the inside, and then take it out for a drive on urban roads and on the motorway. Let's get into it. Volvo EX30 comes in five different colors and even those might look white. This is technically what they're calling a blue. So it's a very, very light baby blue. Nice front on it, some nice creases along the front of it. There is a front in underneath there. It's a double pull one, and then a double latch. And so then inside then you have space for your charging cables pretty much. Um, and then everything else is kind of covered off with, internally within it. Then you've got your Taurus hammers light, and this is very much to the Volvo design at the moment, but on the EX90, these actually open out. Uh, but here is the daytime running lights and your indicators. You've got your high low beam module. You actually have a slot on the side for an air curtain down along the side. The drag coefficient of the Volvo EX30 is 0.28. Uh, you've got some gloss black. You can see the sensors are nicely integrated into that gloss black strip. You've got that large Volvo with a 360 degree camera. More sensors in there and then in underneath and more sensors. And then you've got the ability to cool down as you're driving along your battery pack. Nice textured, very much like a recycled kind of a matte black plastic at the very bottom of the whole thing. But overall, I think it looks great on the front of it. Large wiper in the middle and then a smaller wiper to the side. Let's have a look down along the side. Down along the side, not like your typical SUV. You have got don't have any cladding in along the side at all, but you do have some nice creases on those arches. You can get it in 19, 18, 19s and 20s, and this is the 20 inch because it's the ultra trim. Very much an aero, two-tone gloss black and um, brushed aluminium kind of a look, brushed silver kind of a look. Then moving down along again, some nice more creases inside here. We've got the real Volvo-esque door handles, body colored, gloss black, frameless dormers with that indicator built in. And then they've got that matte black texture down along the side then as well. Two-tone, so you've got the gloss black on the top of it. This one is the Ultra, so it has the pano sunroof, gloss black B-pillar and then your EX30 badging de designator down along the side. No chrome at all, except on the badge, Volvo front and rear on the side. Charging then on standard, it's 11 kilowatt on AC, and on DC, it's uh, 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes. On the ultra trim then, you also have 20 kilowatt AC. Um, so good, and it's exactly what you want. Down at the rear, you actually don't have any aerial at all, and I'm presuming that the aerial antenna is built into the front of the rear of the roof. You have a spoiler with your high-level brake lamp. You have a window washer. You've got some nice um, up or higher level brake lights, um, running lights. The EX30 badge is only on the side of it. Then you've got this beautiful, um, again, very much Volvo design language with the Volvo name written out rather than the badging. You've got your button to open the boot. Lots of body color going on here, and you've got that textured black, matte black plastic in underneath. Boot is not a huge size, 311 liters, so they're probably giving it to you in the rear rather than giving it in the boot. Boot's not a huge size, 311 um, liters. You've got your parcel shelf. You've got a false floor in underneath here, and you've got a 40 60 split, and there's some good space in underneath it actually. Your first aid kit, you've got your 12 volt. You've got um, tie-off points for um, baggage, luggage, and your carry holders. What I don't have in the back here, I do, I've got some, some a small little LED light. And then you've got your Volvo um, smart thinking up here, will it fit, whether it's a luggage, whether it's golf bags, etc., etc. So all the dimensions are up here on the inside of the EX30 trunk. Let's have a look on the inside. Inside the Volvo EX30, this is the Ultra Trim. In Ireland, starting around 39,000 euros. This one we have today is the rear wheel extended range, and it's the Ultra Trim. So the rear wheel extended range is around 44, 45, and then this one with all the extras, etc., on it, and the Ultra Trim is at 51,000 euros, just to give you an understanding as to where we're at. So starting at the top, we've got this stunning pano sunroof. You've got your head unit with your SOS buttons, etc. You've got a nice frameless rear view mirror. You've got your big blinds with your light and um, actually there's no light on the vanity mirror. 
square top, square bottom, squircle. Is that a word? If it is, put it into the comments and let me know. Um, steering wheel, three spoke. Not a fan of these kind of push paddles, to be quite honest. It's very difficult to try and get used to it. Left hand side is your lights and wipers. Right hand side is your gear selector. And we're seeing a lot of this across the Volvo brands and the Gili, because this is based on the Gili platform. Uh, that SEL platform. You've got your driver's um, monitoring system behind the steering wheel, and that's to do with general safety regulation too. So it's driver attention, speed sign recognition, uh, lane keep assist, etc., etc. The steering wheel is reach and rake, in, out, up, and down. Gore, the, probably the nicest door handles I've seen on any car, not premium, economy, etc. All ranges, all shapes and sizes are these gorgeous handles on the X30. Uh, the trim that's on this has this kind of recycled particle um, fascia, which is nice. Soft touch on the top, these floating door handles with that um, soft lined door pocket. Now the actual outside of the door pocket isn't fabriced, so if you had stuff in it, the majority of it would be soundproofed, but if it starts rattling off the side of it, you can hear it there. Um, not a lot of that's going on in front of the driver's steering wheel. There is no head-up display or driver dis uh, screen. Everything's on the 12.3 inch monitor in the front. And the, it's all about maximizing efficiencies and economies. Even the glove box is in underneath here. And you have to use the touch screen to open it. It's a central glove box. Interesting. The vents are gorgeous. They're a vertical with a, a highlighted central different design color that depending on what trim you go for there's a blue trim there's a a greeny kind of a yellowy trim um, then the key itself is here and it has to be in that slot in the center console for it to work before you can engage it and also that's where the chi wireless charging pad is behind that then you've got some storage you've got a secret cubby in underneath that with two usb type c's you've got this central armrest it doesn't move but it has a lot of functionality on the door itself there are no electronics Everything is controlled through the center console with regards to windows, center locking, and then for the door mirrors, it's controlled through the central screen. So you've got your all the way down, and very much like Volkswagen, you have the ability to press a button that says rear, and then open down the rear window. And how far down does it go? All the way, phenomenal. Back up, and then up, and then the center lock, and it is haptic. Then in front of that, then you've got your twin cup holder, and if you don't want it as a cup holder, you can slide that back. You can have it as a single cup holder and then more space in here for storage. You can have it as a single cup holder overall, and then it folds away as well. Smart. Space in underneath there for storage as well. Seats are really nice. Uh, this has got the uh, recycled fabric. They're heated. The steering wheel is also heated. Yeah, it's nice. And then we have the electronically adjusted front driver and passenger on this ultra trim. So I can do the normal up, down, in and out. And then there's a central button and that allows me to tilt the actual base of the seat as well. So yeah, good. So I'm six foot two, 188 centimeters. Let's have a seat in the back and see whether it'll fit me. It is a small SUV, don't forget. But let's have a look in the back. Inside the back of the Volvo EX30 and it's Legs akimbo, unfortunately. With that driver's seat for me, it is a bit tight in the back. You've got a magazine pocket holder and you've got a little one inside internally then for phone mobile phones. You've got your reading light up here, touch sensitive. You've got an ability to have a bit of a coat hook going on. You still have these beautiful handles and you have that um, recycled fascia coming all the way back through. Your floating door handles and a fairly decent pocket for a water bottle, etc. In the center console, you've got the ability for opening and closing your windows, which is nice. Everything is centrally, so it's all about efficiencies. And you've got two USB type C's. You have the ability to put a little phone in there. And you also have a little kind of a storage bin that is accessible front and rear. And one of the many moose that's on the Volvo EX30. Small bit of a transmission tunnel. You've got two isofix in the rear. I don't think there's any in the front. No, there's not. And, and, and there's no a rear armrest on the back of the Volvo EX30. It, could you fit a third person in the middle? It'd be a very small person or a child if you look at the width of the actual uh, seats here. Three headrests in fairness to it and that pano sunroof all the way back over. Let's take it out for a drive on Irish roads. What's it like driving the Volvo EX30? Yeah, the steering wheel is a nice size. I don't know why they went with the flat top because there's nothing behind it. There is the, obviously the driver 
a monitoring system but doesn't need that so are we going to get a head-up display at some stage in the future potentially one pedal drivel is sublime love it the uh, brakes are good um, but that regenerative braking levels are lovely the suspension is probably on the firmer side so uh, if you live with where there's a lot of speed bumps you'll definitely know about it and then the ability to turn off some of these driver assistance systems you go into settings and driving and then all the way down to speed limit warning because it's caught watching the speed signs and the lane keep assist and that resets every time Great to have Google built in because it knows exactly when I'm going somewhere when I put in a destination. It shows you exactly how much battery you've left. And if it thinks you're not going to make it, it'll direct you towards a charging station and will let you know for how long. Your indicators are via the speaker. And speaking of speakers, on this Ultra Trim, we have the Harman Kardon soundbar across the front of it. Seven or nine speakers that's in it. It's probably one of the best um, sound systems that I've ever experienced in a car on a sub 40,000 starting car. Now with the Harman Kardon system, you're talking mid 40s, but one of the best. And something that I get asked a lot about is what's the sound quality like? And it's something I'm not, um, I'm not, a, I'm not good enough to give you an answer on, just what would be my expert area of expertise. There is another YouTube channel called Totally EV. Uh, and I've met the presenter at a couple of events in the UK. And he does specific videos on the sound quality and the speaker systems. So I'll link his channel in the description of this one, but that Harman Kardon sound system is phenomenal. Phenomenal. As I said, when I was in the cabin, I didn't particularly like the paddles on the steering wheel. I just find them a bit finicky. But we'll get them a go now with regards to uh, making, sh see what's like what the, um, adaptive cruise control etc etc lane keeping seats are lovely and even on these 20 inch tires it's very smooth it's very quiet we're at 60 kilometers an hour here we're going to be going up to 120. wouldn't the mirrors have blind spot acceleration and this is just the rear wheel drive there is an all wheel drive and it's the fastest volvo ever 3 point something second, second zero to 100 kilometers an hour. So we're at 119 kilometers an hour. Let's set the cruise control. Feet off the pedals. So the adaptive cruise control has kicked in there now. We're down to 98. And when I'm talking, looking at you, it's actually watching where my eyes are monitoring and it's saying a little coffee symbol pops up and says, focus on the road. So this is all part of that general safety regulation too that's going to be in all cars from the mid-2024. So some brands are just bringing it in earlier. So I can see visually in the top of the screen, hopefully this camera up here will see it. I can see exactly what's in front of me car-wise, how far ahead away from them I am, the blind spots after picking up those motorcycles. It's asking me to focus on the road because it's always about focusing on the road. That adaptive cruise control is very nice. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Jump into the comments and let me know if the EX30 is on your list. Like the video if you did like it. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very, very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you're going to enjoy that video too.